Welcome back. Uh, we're here, all five, and uh, I've got a key question uh, for everyone. Um, I want to know who you think are the best pick and roll duos in the NBA, specifically pick and roll, uh, because it's so overused. We're seeing it now in a regular season and come the playoffs. There's going to be a ton of those. Um, so I, I want you guys to just each pick one. I'll tell you who I'll, I'll pick whichever I prefer. And then I'll, I might share some stats for you as well. Cause I, I did do a bit of research here. Uh, Ed, kick us off. And Bray, I was doing, I wouldn't go lost. I was doing some number crunching. I was, I was doing some number crunches. That was my, <laughs> my favorite things to do. Um, so I had a look at which team has got the best pick and roll stats in the NBA. And there's only one team in the NBA who's got, uh, one, uh, who's got more than one point per possession for every pick and roll. And that is Utah. Every other team has got less than one. And Utah, I was having a look, well, obviously, you no, know, the big man would be in that equation. And it is obviously Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert is second in the league for uh, roll men on terms of scoring efficiency. He scores on 65% of his pick and rolls when he's the roll man. And yeah, second best in the league. I'm not going to tell you who's first, but maybe Bray might have that because uh, the person who's in first, I was going to have potentially as my second duo. And the and obviously the pick and roll handler, he's actually in the top percentile of uh, of points scored per pick and roll possession, and that is Donovan Mitchell as well. So the combo of Donovan Mitchell and uh, Rudy Gobert and picking and putting it as the best part of it. Well, that's just from number. On Mitchell, he's so athletic, he can get to the bucket and he's also a shooting threat as well, which is he's a double threat in terms of mid-range, uh, driving to the basket and shooting from free, which makes him very effective. And he's obviously improved his passing as well. And Rudy Gobert, as much as people hate on him for, uh, you know, just he's, he's not very light. Rudy Gobert is not very light. He was in the James Harden bracket of uh, making fun out of him at the All-Star uh, draft. Um, yeah, and he is really good at finishing the rim when it comes to pick and roll. And there's always the thing about Rudy Gobert with the screen assist. Sometimes when you're all screening, like the other guy just goes to the bucket and that's fine. And he's leading the league as screen assist. So best pick and roll deal is Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. I like it. He's, he's, you've bought the stats. Um, I'll give you that. You're cutting out a bit, so you might not be able to hear what I'm saying. But uh, yeah, uh, I, yeah, there's not much I can say. I didn't think they'd do it. they were doing it that much. I thought Mike Conley was much more in there. But they've obviously turned that around this season. I think it will pay dividends come the playoffs. Uh, Matt, who you got? Who are you two? I I was gonna say Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. However, I got a nice little backup, and it is uh, we go to Phoenix and we go to the best team in the NBA, the team that got to the finals last season, and it is DeAndre Ayton and it is Devin Booker. Like. I think I think that that's what it is in my opinion. Like the DeAndre Ayton was absolutely a man on a mission in that playoff run last season, and Devin Booker has continued his form. He's continued his rise. He is a threat, and yeah, they they are they are the they are the men for the job really in that in my opinion. After Gobert and Donovan Mitchell, yeah, it's literally mad. Two out of three pick and rolls that he does, he scores. Two out of three. That's absolutely absurd. Like. Yeah, he, he's, he's a massive lob threat, obviously, and is a really, really mobile guy uh, for someone who's so big. So uh, props to him um, for, for picking that up. Interestingly, though, um, didn't mention uh, mention Booker instead of the point guard, Chris Paul. Um, Chris Paul, I think, actually has... Uh, he, he, he does more of them um, than, um, uh, than Booker, but I think that's probably because he's got the ball in his hands quite a lot. But uh, yeah, it's Chris. Uh, it's Chris Paul, bro. Because I did numbers on this as well as my number one pick. Uh, DeAndre Ayton, his field goal percentage is sixty nine percent. He's averaging one point three uh, points per possession, which is third to only Sabonis and John Collins. But Chris Paul is averaging fifty two percent from the field, and his score frequency is forty eight percent, which is nuts. Um, only on 8.5 possessions, which is not that high for a ball handler. Um, but yeah, Chris Paul is the is the one. He's the point guard. Yeah, only, only he's he's only slightly better, I think, um, than Booker. But I think like the where Booker shoots it better, I think Chris Paul's like vision and ability to find passes um, to Aiton uh, that maybe you know Booker, Booker just doesn't have yet. Um, he's called the point guard for a reason. Uh, George, have you got have you got anyone else to throw into the mix? 
Um, yeah, so again, another one I went a bit different one. I went for some uh, duo, which I'm actually really excited to pull off the pick and roll. And for this one, I'm, I'm going for Philly, man. That Harden and Embiid kind of pick and roll partnership. And you saw flashes of it. And you know Alex is loving it. Look, I can already see him there like... Mm. I'm growing out the beard, George. Honestly, exactly. you should do, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you the beard comb as well so you can just stick it in there. But yeah... Um, from the get-go, as soon as the announcement happened, I was excited. I mean, you saw flashes of that performance, both on fast breaks, their partnership, but also a lot of pick and rolls going in. And it also gives them loads of options and Bede still working on that hard and step back. But we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that develops. But yeah, I think they're definitely a duo to watch out for going forward into the next few seasons. I think they'll be right up there. Yeah, for sure. Because one of the biggest things about um, the best pick and roll duos is it's where you've got an elite three point shooter. So it means they've always got to cover him or you get the roller who can both pop and roll. And both of those guys feel that normally you only need one. Uh, whereas Embiid, I think um, he said in some interviews, he was like he, he caught the ball under the basket on one of the on one of the possessions and he fumbled it. He was like, I, there was no way I thought I was getting that ball. He just didn't, like, no one's ever thrown a pass to him like that. He just wasn't expecting it, completely fluffed it. Like, that's the kind of things that Harden can do. So, um, yeah. Um, in terms of usage, though, was one of the things that I was uh, looking at. Um, and does anyone, I suppose you've got to look, you probably have an idea of who the highest usage pick and roll ball handler is in the league. Got to be Joker. No, no, ball handler, but the the who who's got the ball in their hands, uh, mm. coming up for a pick and roll. Maybe Trey. Yeah, Trey Young, oh. fourteen and a half a game. Mm. Funnily enough, Wildy actually texted me uh, when I posed this question, and he just wrote Trey Young and anyone. <laughs> 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 um, but you know what? Um, uh, his teammate um, John Collins also features on the rollers list, and that's another deadly combo. Because Collins isn't a great three-point shooter, but he can do it. And obviously, Trey is elite and has got a limited range as well. So that's a kind of underrated duo. They're not doing very well this season, which is, I think, why they've not cracked our conversation. Um, but, yeah, honourable mentions as well. Uh, Drew Holiday and Yanis Antetokounmpo kind of got that. I'd say Yanis is a better version of Aiton, but uh, Drew is obviously not as good as Chris Paul. Um, and then uh, a weird one. LeBron James and Anthony Davis when they're healthy. Wow. Mm. You've, you've got your boys in uh, Chi-Town. Uh, I crunched the numbers and, the, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't want to be disrespectful to Vooch, but DeMar is unbelievable in the pick and roll. Oh, yeah. He's like, his possessions is like, out of the top five, it's, it's much lower. He's shooting 51% and he's the lowest of the turnover frequency in the top 15 players. And he scores 52% of the time. And I was like, oh, let's see how Vooch has done. Uh, it, it just wasn't great. For a big man, he's only shooting like 43%. His scoring frequency is 41. What? And he's only up there because he has the most amount of points, which is annoying. I'll tell you the reason for that, though, is it is because they run it quite high so that DeRose can get into a sweet spot on the elbow. And then what Vooch does is he pops. Never, ever rolls. He only rolls if they hard switch it and he's got a smaller guard in, at which point he can punish people, but they don't do that very often. They say, Vooch, you run over to the three-point line, the mile will hit him open, and then, unfortunately, he's not shot the ball very well this season, which is why the numbers don't really don't really look that good. But to be honest, like, I, I think it's... I think the numbers are lying a bit because when you see him setting those picks, doing those handoffs, getting that ball moving, like, he's such an integral part of that offense in a way that people like Aiton and Gobert really don't have the passing ability or kind of the, the court vision to, to help do that. And obviously the, the ability to shoot the three even slightly well, uh, which is what he's been doing this season, is really interesting for me as well. Um, for, w w one person we haven't mentioned, and I'll, I'll give him a shout out, Stefan Draymond. Steph Draymond pick and roll. Mm. Um, like, that's an unbelievable duo. Like, because they have to guard Steph so high, they just dump it into Draymond and then play four on three. Like, uh, that was the Warriors' death lineup, um, if you remember back in the days. But, yeah, hopefully we'll see those guys back. And, uh, yeah, for me, I think it's 
I think it's got to be Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert because their their offense their offensively their team is so so good, um, and that's really where they've made their bones this season. And um, despite having a defensive player of the year candidate, so uh, that's where I sit. Um, yeah, comment comment who you think it is. But um, no, cheers cheers for laying that one out, guys. A bit more technical than we normally go. Yeah, 